When I was six years old, I told my mom that letters don't make words. A simple comment that could be laughed off as something little kids say. Doesn't make any sense, but they're cute when they say it. My mom didn't do exactly that. I don't think she took it to heart, but she definitely didn't ignore it. As I grew up, letters still didn't make words. They were separate. Words were words, and sentences were sentences, and paragraphs were paragraphs. They had nothing to do with each other. I learned my ABCs when I relatively should have, preschool, three, four years old, and I liked to sing it a lot. That was something about me. If I could sing something, if I could say something, I would. It hasn't really stopped. <laughs> but when it came to words, they were foreign. Words didn't have meaning. I, for a long time, was illiterate. I couldn't read and I couldn't write. If you put a book in front of me, depending on my age, I would either stare at it blankly or fake it. And what I mean by fake it is that I figured out really soon, if you look like you're reading and you act like you're reading, the teacher will think you're reading. I had to learn a lot of things like that. Elementary school for me was a time of trying to fit in in the classroom. Socially, I had friends. Recess was the best time. But in class, I was different. In second grade, I was diagnosed with dyslexia, a learning-based language disability that is very common. A lot of people have it. Enough where if you say it to someone, they'll probably nod their head and be like, oh yeah, I know what that is. But for me, it has always been more than just B's and D's. It was a lack of access. Because I never had the proper education at that young age to give me literacy, the world didn't look the same. Street signs meant nothing. Books meant nothing. The internet beyond videos and pictures meant nothing. If I was playing a video game and there were written instructions, I'd ignore it and just figure it out. But that was until I got to the right school. And I didn't get to the right school because of luck or because of teachers. I got to the right school because of my parents. They were vigilant and they said something is wrong. Our curious, intelligent, insightful, talkative little girl isn't reading, isn't writing. And the teachers she has are telling us to wait. Wait for what? Nothing. So they took it into their own hands. They tried everything. They tried summer tutors. They tried summer school. They tried extra help. They helped me in every way they could, but it wasn't enough. My dyslexia was too severe to be augmented with a little help. Luckily, they found a school that wasn't that far away, about 45 minutes from home. And fortunately, they had the financial means to send me there a private school that tailors their education for students with learning-based language disabilities. I was fortunate, lucky, and so thankful to go there from fifth through 12th grade. I am certain without that education, I wouldn't be here today. And I don't mean on this stage, I mean in college. I probably, well, maybe, would have flunked out of high school like thousands of other students with learning disabilities who do not get the help they need. The school system that we depend on as a nation doesn't help these students. And more often than not, they don't really understand what's wrong and they go their entire life struggling. Some of them never even get diagnosed. Many of the parents of students at my specialized school didn't even know they had dyslexia or another learning disability until their child was, dis was diagnosed. And then a lot of things started to make sense for them. This shouldn't be the narrative. This shouldn't be the truth that we live in. Students should be helped at a young age. I had all the potential to be literate at a young age. But the methods in which I was taught did not give me that. 
It's a big problem with big questions and big answers, none that I have. I'd be lying to you if I said, well, if we do X, Y, and Z, it would all be better. It's not that simple. The education system in this country isn't that simple. But one thing that sticks out to me through those years of being different is the way people talked about me, the way in which they talked to me. I was slow, I was dumb, I was stupid, and according to one playground bully, I was retarded. I was worthless. And those feelings, they've stuck with me. And they've stuck with a lot of kids like me. And it isn't just little elementary school kids and playground bullies. It's teachers who look at you with pity and little confidence. Maybe parents who don't really know what to do. Or even in high school cafeterias where you say, it took me so long to write that paper. And everyone goes, what do you mean? It was so easy. Not everything's easy, not everything is simple. And for so many people, the act of getting up every day and going to school, whether elementary, middle, high, or college, is the hardest thing they have to do. It feels impossible. There are days when I know what is waiting for me in those classrooms and in my assignments, and I don't wanna get up. I don't even wanna look at it, but I do. And what helps me is having supportive people who understand or try to, who empathize, who talk to me in a way that isn't belittling. The way in which we talk about disability can change. That is something that has a simple answer. It's being aware in the way we talk. That disabilities are just that, disabilities. They aren't what makes a person. People with disabilities aren't those disabilities and the way in which we speak to them, speak to the acts that we do every day that for you might be easy. Maybe calculus is a breeze. I know there is a lot of people who don't think that. And going around laughing at them, saying it's so easy, doesn't help anyone. And for people with disabilities, that's amplified. So think about the way in which we talk, talk to each other, talk about things we do. If you were to walking with someone who was in a wheelchair and started going up the stairs, would you turn around and look at them and say, come on, it's easy. I think not. For people with invisible disabilities, such as a learning disability, such as dyslexia, this is even more true. It's not like someone in a wheelchair. You can't see it. So being aware, being conscious, is the first step to using language that is inclusive. Inclusivity is a great tool for people with disabilities and for people without. By including those people in the language that you use or don't use can make a world of a difference. I know there are days when I want to leave a classroom because the ableism stinks in it. But I don't. I sit and I talk. But not everyone is up for that. Not everyone is up for being an ambassador to disabilities, to learning, to education. So we as individuals need to be conscious, need to think. Statistically speaking, I am not the only person in this room with a disability visible or invisible? Would you want the people around you to feel bad about themselves and about their ability or lack thereof it? Would you want them to feel excluded? Thank you.